Okay, we actually installed the seal in there. We should have shown you doing that. There's a washer, a steel washer on the outside that we took out. And then we took this seal out here. And we put a new seal in behind and then the washer on. And this is actually a kind of a field change up that was done on some of the tractors. The part number for the seal is 17558. Find a washer when you take it apart. It would be the original Massey seal, and then it is a Viton double lip uh, red seal that you would find and replace it with that. The idea of this steel washer is so that when you're putting the tractor back together, you don't can't damage the seal. It has to be aligned and go into the steel washer before the seal. I'm going to install the clutch, and the clutch looks good, so we're just putting the old one back in. The hub has to go into the uh, pressure plate, and so then we're putting the pressure plate up. We have an aligning tool that is borrowed from the dealer. Lift a little bit if you can. Lift more. Yep. You're torquing the uh, pressure plate to 35 foot pounds. Turn around it the second time just to do it double check. Then we'll pull out the pilot shaft that we use and it came out nice so that everything felt that it was lined up pretty good. So now we're ready for adjusting this. Normally you adjust this, this uh, because this is a release bearing, a pull release bearing, you're gonna pull it out and we've kind of made a big uh, test jig, test jig kind of for clearance and we're supposed to be five and 5.418 out, and so we're pretty close actually there, isn't it? Oh, that's what. And so we're in a bit here. So to adjust this out, you actually take this little, uh, let's take it off. And So this is just a little lock mechanism. And this can be done after the fact in the trip. If, if you have to make an adjustment, you can do this up through the hole in the bottom, but it's a lot easier to do it now before you put it together if it needs adjusting. Okay, we're installing the new bushing. It's the steady rest bushing for the PTO shaft. And so we'll put it in the back of this whole assembly. So we're lining it up in there and then it's a press fit in there. So that's what it should look like when you get it done. And then this whole assembly is ready to go into the uh, tractor. We've attached the tool to the front cover and we're ready to assemble it into the front of the housing of the transmission, so that's what we're ready to do. Okay, we had to line up those uh, three shift shafts, and to get it in, we had to twist the front assembly on the tool here to get it to go in and line up. Okay, so we're 
finished getting the front cover in place and so we're just giving it a final torque of 35 foot-pounds so we've been around a couple times and we'll just make sure that they're all at 35 foot-pounds okay we in we installed the oil lines and just following the, the way they come off. There's the lube line, the high pressure line, and the second and low clutches. And so those are fastened with little bolts. And these are just the nuts go on so that your lines are all back on. And then we're going to, the next thing we'll do is install the brakes. And so you put a, a, a external one on first over the dowels then you put a internal one that has the splines on the, the on the shaft and then two more external ones and these are the transmission brakes so when we're done we have to adjust these so the pressure goes on to these discs so the transmission will stop turning so that you can shift the transmission And then there's two little snap rings are going to go on here to hold those just in place while you get till you get them all assembled. So you stack the brick discs until you get 5.8 inches from the front disc to the front face of the of the uh, bell housing here. And so that's what we got with what we took out. So we put back exactly what we took out. But if you were short, you would add another steel plate. Okay, just gonna put the side cover on. So we're gonna glue the gasket to the side cover so it'll stay in place more than the, the, the gasket's gonna do the sealing. This is just gonna hold it in place. Okay, we're going to install the side cover and you have to make sure that you line these up with the shift rails for the transmission. So inside there, we have to make sure that these go in the notches on the shift rails. We were on these dowels here, and so we rocked the engine back and forth here just to keep freedom. And then we just took up the plate here. We didn't pull it in with the bolts, but we did take the slack out as it rocked, and, and we kept the split between the transmission and the engine totally as square as we could using the two jacks underneath, and it slid together very nicely. Okay, we're putting in all the bolts around the flywheel housing that hold the engine to the transmission. So we'll put all those in and tighten them up. Okay, we actually removed uh, a, the floor mat and a cover here to get access to the two bolts in the top of the bell housing. So with this cover removed, we can get it with a 5 8 inch 12 point socket to, there's some special bolts in there and so that's what we're going to use to get at those top bolts okay we're removing our special engine jack and so we're taking the bolts off and okay so we're ready to put the uh, release mechanism for the clutch release bearing and because it's a pull release this is the mechanism that's inside the clutch and these pull instead of pushing like a normal clutch does so we have to align all these up and put these set screws in 
under there. And so that's what we're going to be doing. And so that's uh, kind of the next project under there. shifter on here on that clutch that we're working on and then we're going to put a snap ring on this side okay we're going to put the clutch lever on and the key in and so it goes on this shaft under here PTO assembly off the back because it's spring loaded with the shaft forward and so now we have to put it back in so it is actually fairly clean under our rag here so I'm just lubricating that bearing there's an o-ring a uh, square o-ring on the base there and then this goes in so we tighten this we put this plate on and we tighten it up as tight as we could here with Okay, we're attaching the clutch cable. There's a spacer and then a nut. And you take it up until you, until you got a... Half inch of travel, I believe, up here in the clutch. This is the tack cable we're connecting up here. And then we're gonna do the throttle cable next okay that's the throttle cable that we're installed and now we got to do the shut off cable okay we're uh, going to connect the wires up here, the big multi uh, plug port, and we're going to give them a blow with air before we connect them. And then we're going to put these here hydraulic lines on the power steering pump that we marked when we took them off. So uh, we'll put these three, four lines on and those two electrical connectors. Okay, we're uh, reconnecting the heater hoses that we disconnected before. And so we got to thread them back through. Okay, we're connecting the lines up. I got to put them through another bracket here. connected the two hydraulic lines in there and now we're going to connect these two air conditioning lines okay I've connected the two fuel lines here and now I'm putting a little clamp just to support the brackets here and, and then we're turning the taps on back under the cab at the base of the fuel tank is where the taps are to turn on.